Hello and welcome to Dynamic Data Masking in 20 Minutes. My name is David Postlethwaite. I'm a database administrator, Azure admin and DevOps engineer for Banking Circle, a financial services company based in Copenhagen in Denmark. I've been working as a DBA for well over 10 years and I currently manage both SQL and Oracle instances on premises and in Azure and I'm also involved in automation and DevOps. Previous to that, I was a developer using .NET, SQL, Access, Fox Pro and Oracle, and way back in time, I was a Windows and a Netware administrator. I think we've all read about data breaches in the press. Even pretty large companies seem to be able to lose customer information. We're all aware that our data is under attack, hackers are constantly trying to steal it, rogue employees are trying to sell it, and we still leave laptops full of customer data in taxis or on the train. Keeping our data safe is becoming an even more important task. The good news is that in SQL Server 2016, Microsoft added three new security features which can help us to keep our data more secure. These are available in Azure SQL Database as well as SQL Server. Even better, they're available in all editions of SQL Server from Enterprise to Express. Always Encrypted allows us to encrypt specific columns in our table, which can then be only unencrypted and viewed using a key and a certificate by the client. This means that the data is secure at rest within the database and also in transit between the database and the client application. Row level security, here we can control which users can see which rows of data in a table based on their login regardless of how the data is viewed whether from management studio or a client application and we can use this to prevent unauthorized access to certain rows in a shared table or to implement connection filtering in a multi-tenant environment but today we are going to be looking at dynamic data masking the dynamic data masking enables you to obfuscate data by controlling how the data appears in the output of your query so that users who are not authorized cannot see all or some of the columns in your table. It doesn't change the data in the table, it just places a mask over it when it's displayed on the screen. It can be done on an existing table without affecting database operations or requiring changes to application code. Traditionally, to obfuscate your sensitive data, you have had to either code it into your application layer or use views or third-party tools. But because these aren't built into the database, it's easy to get around them. Simply use a different application like Excel that doesn't know the rules. But with SQL Server's dynamic data masking, the masking logic is held within the table itself. So it doesn't matter where you run your query, Management Studio or the client application, it will always be applied to the output of your query, which makes it a much more secure method of implementing masking. Dynamic data masking can be very useful when copying a production database to test or production support. You could define your masks in your production database, but only activate them in the UAT database, potentially saving many hours running obfuscation code. Currently, there are only four predefined functions for masking. We've got default, which replaces all the characters with X's and all numbers with zero. More of a way to hide the complete value than mask part of it. We have the email function, and this displays the first letter of the email address, followed by xxxxx, and then puts at xxxx.com at the end, regardless of the actual domain name. Random replaces numbers with random values from a specific range. Partial, which is probably the most useful one, here you can define the number of characters to display at the beginning and at the end of your string and the masking characters in the middle. In Azure, there's a masking function listed called credit card, but this is actually just a predefined partial function that displays the last four characters of the credit card number. The code for dynamic data masking is pretty straightforward. We just add masked with and the function that you wish to use to the column, and we can alter an existing table in a similar way. There's no GUI within Management Studio that I can find to do this, so you'll have to do it using T-SQL. If you're applying masking to an Azure database, there is an option in the Azure portal that will even try to recommend fields that it thinks should have a mask on them. 
You don't need any special permissions to create a table with a dynamic data mask, only the standard create table and alter on the schema. If you want to change an existing table, either add, replace or remove a mask on a column, you require the alter any mask permission along with the alter permission on the table. All users with select or DB data reader permissions will see the mask data when issuing queries, but by default anyone with DB owner permissions will always see the unmasked data, which is another reason to ensure you design your database security correctly. But this can be revoked. You can turn it off if you want to. If you want a user or role to be able to view the unmasked data, then you can use the grant unmask command. There's no fine granularity with dynamic data masking. You can't pick and choose which masks within a table affect which users. All the masks are either on or all the masks are off for a table. So let's have a demo. Here I am in SQL Server Management Studio 2017 and I'm connected to a SQL Server 2017 instance on my local desktop. So the first thing I'm going to do is just drop any of the objects, if they still exist, from the previous run. There we go. So let's create a table, very simple table, customers DDM. We're going to create it with a customer ID, first name, last name, social insurance number, credit card, email, phone number. Let's create that and we'll insert some data into it and then we'll have a quick look to see what it looks like. So there are just a simple set of eight rows, first name, last name, social insurance number, as we said. Now let's add some masks to our table. So I'm going to add an email function to the email address. And to the phone number, I'm just going to add the default function. The last name, I'm going to use a partial function. So we'll display the first character of that column the last two characters and five X's in the middle. And I'll also add another partial function to the credit card number, and that will be XXX, 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 and the last four numbers of the credit card. So let me run those in. And that's gone fine. If we wanted to, we could have created it from scratch using this command, so just create table and then specified the mask for each column. Now I am logged in as a DB owner, system admin. So when I run a select statement against the customer's DDM table, I'm seeing all the data exactly as we would expect to see it in clear text. Now let me create a user called mask user and I'll grant them read access to my table. Now, if I run that select statement again, but this time executing it as the mask user, you'll see that we're now seeing the mask data. So we're now seeing that the last name B and the last two characters, A and the last two characters. The credit card number is appearing as how you often see credit cards appearing on bank statements. The email address again is showing the first letter at xxx.com and the phone number we've actually hidden completely with that default function and that will work from wherever I try and run this query from from an application just like from Management Studio. Now one of the drawbacks of dynamic data masking it hasn't changed the data so a clever user can work out some of the data just by using a where clause so if I run this as mask user and this time I'm going to look for anyone whose last name is Bryant and of course, that returns this record. So we know that this person is Ariana Bryant. We've worked that out. It hasn't changed the data underneath. So any where clause still uses the data. So malicious users could start working out things like salary details just by using a greater than and less than. To... Now we can allow a user to see unmasked data by using the grant unmask command. So if I grant unmask to mask user, and now execute as the masked user. The masked user now sees the clear text data. So that allows us to define users and roles that can see the masked data or the unmasked data. 
So let me revoke that unmask. And if I just prove that it's working, let's run it again. And we see the masked data again. Now you might think, well, what happens if I write the data to a temporary table? Can I get hold of the masked data that way? No, you can't. When you write masked data into a temporary table, it actually writes the masked data to that table. So here I'm going to execute as mask user and I'm going to write the data into hash temporary table from customer DDM. So let me run that. And it's created that table. So if I select all the rows from hash temp table, you'll see that I'm seeing masked data. Now if we try that where clause again, so if we look now for um, the user where last name equals Bryant, it doesn't return anything because we are now looking at masked data or changed data, not the original data. So you, you can't extract the underlying data, data by trying to write it into a temporary table. So let's just drop that temporary table and revert back again. If you want to drop a mask, it's very easy. Just say alter table, alter column and drop mask. So if we run that, so if we drop the email column, Oh, if we drop the mask on the email column, and if we execute again, then now the email address is appearing as clear text. If you want to verify which columns in your database have masked columns, then you can use the masked columns table. And that, if I run, will tell me that in the table customers DDM, these three columns have these three masks. Now there's a few things that you should know if you're going to use dynamic data masking. First of all, masking doesn't prevent you updating a column. Anyone with update permissions can make updates, even though they may see the masked data. As you've just seen, if you copy data from a masked table, you'll end up with the masked data, not the original data in that target table. You can't apply a masking rule to always encrypted and file stream columns or computed columns. But if the computed column depends on a column with a mask, then the computed column will be returned with masked data. Um, column set and sparse columns can't be used. And a column with masking data can't be used in a full text index. In some cases, you can't add a mask on a column with dependencies, such as an index. You'll have to remove that dependency first, add the mask, and then recreate the dependency. And as we saw, it's very easy to crack a mask by using a good use of the WHERE clause. In summary, you can use dynamic data masking to mask sensitive data in your application, but make sure that all logins are set correctly for every way that the data can be viewed. Ensure no one other than DBAs have permissions to override the mask. And remember, data can still be updated. It's easy to use brute force attack to work out masked data, and the data is still unencrypted. If you really want to obfuscate the data, you need to use always encrypted. I hope you found this useful and you can now look at ways of making your data safer. This 20 minute special is from my full length talk on SQL Server 2016 security features which covers always encrypted row level security as well as dynamic data masking and you can view it and more of my videos on SQL databases and Azure on my YouTube channel. Enjoy the rest of the conference and thank you for listening.